Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm playing a little bit with my um, blade sender down here this is the IBM blade sender H and I have 14 different blades in it it's uh, they're not all that different but some of them are different and I have one this one that I've booted right here and it has two CN processors and these are the 53 3500 series and the 53 3500 series they have a CPU benchmark if you go over to CPU benchmark you will see that the 53 35 has a benchmark about 2559 2559 and um, I have um, have some other processors here and these are actually they are the E5420 s these are quad cores and they're 2.5 gigahertz each and those processors the benchmark is about 3500 and well it's actually right there in my hand I've written it down because I couldn't remember it so 3500 and 37. I can score a thousand CPU points per CPU that I re exchange out of these. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to take this plate and power it down again. I just power it up to make sure that that was the blade that had that CPU. So now I can power it down again. Then I'll be changing out the CPU to score that thousand points per CPU. So on this blade uh, I have ESXi 6.0.0 running in this edition and the blade is an HS21 that model number uh, used to oh, used to have another CPU I think I have exchanged this one out at some point um, and here are the two CPUs it's the E5355 2 gigahertz and they are quad cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So to reboot this system we have to press F12 to shut down and restart. F12 and then it wants a password. That's my secret password. There we are. Um, force terminate. Yeah I don't think there's anything running on it but we're gonna do that. And F2 to shut down. F2. Shut down in progress. The blade server has shut down. It was number five here. I can see that because the monitor was connected to that one. So we're gonna take this out. And I'm gonna be using my console here as a as a table. So we're gonna put this on here and Right here is all the drawings that you need to, to do a lot of the maintenance on this system. There is how to take the blade server apart and there is how to put in hard drives. There is how to put in expansion ports, microprocessor options and an overview of everything. And I do know that it opens up this way. So, And to open it up there is a couple of handles here, you press on each side and it can be opened. I even at some point put on the numbers of what processors was in this. So this is what we have inside. We have the two processors right here. We have four slots for RAM. We have a, a hard drive here. We have room for another hard drive right here. And here is room for an expansion card over there. Uh, this server does not have one. It has a connection here for uh, these blade servers can be put together two and two so you can put an expansion card on this and I think you can do some more RAM and some more external I.O. cards but I'm not gonna be using that over here is the power regulators this is the BIOS battery graphics chips network chip and another network chip and down here is a little button that tells if there was any errors on the server uh, I don't think so it, it lights up green when I press it. Uh, I'm not sure what the LP1 stands for. But we're gonna take out the processors now. I have a little screwdriver here and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be very carefully loosening each side a little bit. Just 
loosening it just a little bit here so that the heat sink comes up and to get this out right I need, I need to take out the front and there's a little lever here that should enable me to remove the front of the server just by a little bit because the heat sink goes in under this piece of metal so I want to get that off and this feels very loose now so and I just do this and it comes right out and you can see the cooling compound has been on there oh, a little bit much of it I guess so I'm gonna clean that off but let's just remove the other one now we are at it and there are the two processes it's more or less like on every IBM server there's this little lever that opens up and the processor is free so I can remove these now and there's a little triangle that points up in this corner this corner so I'll try to remember that here is the first processor I just cleaned it off with some tissue and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one it has a little piece of sticker I'm not really gonna be needing that anymore so but I'm just gonna clean that off as well I guess I was lazy when I took this out last time so here are the two processors very clean so I'm gonna find that triangle where is it it's there put that down like that this one closed by itself I just happen to push it and put that down there close the lever here and now the processor should have a good connection to all the connections down there now I just need to clean out the heat sinks a little bit pretty dirty too now we have to put on some heat sink compound um, and it just needs a little bit and everybody on the internet has their own way to do this I have mine I give it a little dab there that's how I do it I always get a lot of links to a lot of people that does it differently that's okay I do it like this so we're gonna put these back on kind of the same thing I'll make sure that both screws are have a good connection and then tighten them a little bit each so that the heatsink goes down straight don't want it to to go down on one side and then not go down on the other side And these processes are great because there's a stop. You cannot over screw these, or you can, but it just stops right there. The other one, and I did clean these. Yeah, they're in. And I can now put the front of the server back have to be careful there's a little tiny connector here for the buttons and the light diodes and I do not want to damage that because that would not be a good thing and this little connector goes in there like that out of the way so now I should have upgraded this server to faster CPUs put the case back on I really need to fix this okay I found some some acetone and that should be really good to remove this text and I also found the pin I think this is exactly the same pin that I used to to write that with so I'm gonna take some acetone on some paper here 
and I'm gonna remove the text just some of it yeah it goes off really well I'm gonna remove that too cleans really well too and I put on the new text I'm probably never gonna use that I always use the, the facts at the computer but well now it was there and now I fixed it I cleaned up the two old TPUs and as you can see this is the E5355 so they can go for protective keeping and maybe be used on another project someday had a question some time back where do you turn on these plates there is no power button over here there's a power button on the side you can see it right there the white thing you can press that and the plate will power on but these things does not have a power button but they actually do because underneath here whoopsie there's a power button power button right there and there's a reset button and down here is the serial number and the model number so there is these levers on the plates where these informations are hidden and if you don't know they're there they're actually a little bit hard to uh, to understand but you just need to do that so let's power on number five right there and it's complaining hmm. it's not meant to do that As long as it's blinking fast, it's in some kind of, um, I'm thinking about it, mode. And when it blinks slow like this, it should be ready. Okay, now it's blinking slow again. So let's try and power it on, see what happens. And it failed. Oh, damn. So what is wrong here? Did I do something wrong? Did I put the CPUs in the wrong way? I actually didn't the the mistake is that this is not what I was going to show you the mistake is this that this server is a can we come in and see that we might be able to see this it's a it's an 8853 L3G and the L3G is important in this case because the LTG is from back in time and it only supports dual core CPUs it will actually also work with the 5300 series which is quad cores but it will not run with the 5400 series and I have four other blades in the blade center that will and they're also the LS21 series but they have a newer system board and that will support the Intel Xeon 5400 series this one will not I'm not gonna get that up and running in this server or this server I have to get servers with newer system boards to have that running and that's very difficult to find that out because they look alike it's just one little letter that does all the difference I guess very much that this project just died I went in and looked at it up on the internet and found out that this model of server did not support quad cores of the 5400 series so I'm gonna go back and take the old CPUs and put them back in and I'm gonna scratch my neck for a little bit I'll find something else to use the quad cores here for maybe see if I can find another blade server that will support them it's a waste having good processors laying around I hope you got a little bit smarter too Thank you for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel and join me over at Google Plus where I occasionally post pictures of what I'm up to. I might just go and do that. Have a nice day. Bye bye.